It's official. Scientists have found the gene that protects Asian people from obesity. Does that explain why Asians are so skinny? Let's talk about it. We have come to the conclusion that your genetics can be prophetic for in your future, whether you become a fatty or a fitty. Let's talk about it. Oh, uh, we got to talk about it, Andrew. Chinese scientists find the gene that protects people in Southern China, Southeast Asia against obesity. We're going to break it down. Is this true? Is this false? What's going on right here? Because... A lot of people would be really happy to hear this, right? Right. Let's go through it, and we're going to talk about are Asians actually skinny? Uh, is the, is that true, or is it deceptive? But also, there's a whole bunch of comments, because obviously, probably everybody knows some big Asians that... Uh, Maybe the gene didn't work for them. But anyways, let's talk about it, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys and hit us with the super thanks if you love these topics. Let me just take a look at this journal of genetics and genomics, Andrew. It just got published. Natural selection shaped the protective effect of MTDNA lineage against obesity in Han Chinese populations. Ooh, so it says the Chinese. This. Let's just go through the study real quick. Although it is widely recognized that obesity is influenced by multiple factors, including genetic variants that are primarily enriched in the pathways of lipid metabolism and energy maintenance environmental pressures and behavioral influences that could trigger natural selection such as positive selection and purifying selection are the mechanisms underlying its development uh long story short andrew there's just saying there's some mitochondrial function in this specific gene this is mitochondria right here these are the studies the gene the haplogroup is m7b 1A1, and basically it just says that certain people, Andrew, have increased metabolism. Right, so they're saying Han Chinese people generally have increased metabolism, therefore making it harder, but not obviously not impossible to be obese. Right, but specifically a Southern Han population as well as some Southeast Asian populations like Vietnamese. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. Uh, but my whole thing was when I saw this, I was like, is it just because of diets? Is it because there's a lot more veggies in the South? Because obviously it's a warmer climate to grow mm. vegetables. I was just wondering, is this like a cuisine thing or is it related to the haplogroups? I don't know. I mean, I think metabolism, obviously, you know, you everybody knows that friend who kind of has a higher metabolism. Like it doesn't, they can eat a lot, but maybe they burn it quickly or they just don't hold on to the fat very often. Um, I would say my metabolism is probably above average, you know, for me. Uh, I've been called skinny in my life, but I think I'm more lean. Are you saying you have the M71A1? Yeah, I think I, I think I was born with the I was born with the M seven one A one you know in the haplogroup group Southern Chinese. Uh, but yeah, I mean you know I sweat a lot and I move a lot and I think I burn a lot of calories. Therefore, my and also my digestive system. I'm not gonna lie, man. You know me, I go pee real quickly and I take a lot of dukes. You're saying you just got the hypercharged flow yeah your chi is going yes yes my <laughs> inner my inner organs are working nonstop. so real quick guys uh this was a correlative study it's not a complete breakdown of that haplogroup so if you guys know about science it's almost like the beginning of an investigation but it just says there might be something here so there's promising evidence that this is true it's not necessarily deep it's not facto yet right right, but right. It's my whole thing is like there could be less buff people in those populations too because sometimes when you try to get buff, Andrew, you just over bulk and then you can't cut again. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd say a lot of Southern Chinese anecdotally are very lean, wiry, strong. You talk about a Bruce Lee. You mm. talk about our friend Nelson Chan. I mean, I would say even... Jackie Chan or some Jet yeah. Li. I mean, obviously they're not necessarily lean, similar. but yeah, just they're just lean. Some lean dudes, like very like I. I just think about all those dudes in Chinatown that are doing calisthenics and pull ups, and they're super lean and ripped and just but very lean bodies, like not big frames, you know. Right, right, right. But then there's the, also the bolo guy. Hey, there's an, uh, there's exceptions to everything. Anyway, I, I would say this. To me, I would rather apply this study, and I know this haplogroup is more specific, but I'd rather apply it to all Asians in general because I looked on the internet, Andrew. There's literally a hundred links of various people, whether they were Asian or non-Asian, asking, hey, guys, why do you think Asians are so small and skinny compared to other races? It seems like their volume and their mass is just much lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, is it, 
Is it proven fact that we are or that yeah, at least I mean, people I from it Asia? Because I, I, I'll tell you this. Given the diet, I mean, you know, I mean, especially, obviously, if you're an Asian person, you grow up eating beef and milk in America. Maybe you're a little bit bigger than the ones in Asia who eat more carbs. Right. Well, let's just take a look at the stats here because I did the research. What's actually behind the low Asian American obesity rate? So- the Asian American rate of obesity was 11%, Andrew, compared to other ethnicities that were up at 35%. Whoa. However, recently it jumped to 13, 13.5%. So the Asian American rate is actually fast, one of the fastest growing obesity rates, but partially because it was so low to begin with. Right, right. And also, like, I think that when they were first judging Asians on obesity rates, they were probably... Uh, uh, rating a lot of immigrant Asians. A lot Honest, of first generation. A lot of first generation Asians and you know that they're, a lot of them are lean but when you grow up in America, man, and you got all the candies and burgers and fries and all this delicious ice cream readily available, fried chicken, oh my gosh. All right, anecdotally, yesterday, and by the way, today is a holiday, right? So I saw a lot of people out on a Thursday in New York, Andrew. I saw at midnight a ton of people drinking IPAs and eating pizza. A slice of pizza, Andrew, pepperoni pizza, has up to 350 calories. An IPA has 200 calories. That meant that people were getting in at least 1,000 to 1,500 calories at midnight. That's the culture in America. You're not going to see people in Asia generally take something that caloric dense in at midnight. Would you agree? Yeah. So it's a lifestyle. Well, you know, that's why I don't want to be one of those stick skinny bamboo Asians. You know, I'm... I like a little gut. Gut and butt. Grow both of them like a letter B. Gut, um, butt, and bust, baby. Um, by the way, though, just because Asians have low obesity, obesity rates, it does not mean that sometimes they don't have higher diabetes rates, Andrew, or like colon cancer linked to eating sodium and nitrite flavored meats. Yeah, no, uh, the diabetes rate amongst Asian Americans is increasing rapidly. Not to say that it's high, uh, it's higher than the other groups, but it's increasing and obviously that disproportionately is, increasing. And that's due to diet, to be honest, you know, diet and lifestyle, you know, when you get here. Um, so yeah, I mean, also to be honest, Asian, a lot of Asians appear skinny, but you can still be obese and skinny. Skinny is a look by the way, and obesity is just the rate of body fat percentage. So you are you can be skinny fat. You know what I mean? You ever squeeze one of those Asian girl or Asian guy's arms and then it just goes... Psh, right, just right, deflates. right. You're saying you can't tell until you grab it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, for me, I was 8.8 uh, .8 pounds when I was born. So I was already... I'm clearly like partially endomorphic. These are the three different body types. So I can tell people that... It's not just the haplo group. It's also like the body type that you're born with will impact how much you hold on to muscle and well, fat. Well, David, let me tell you, man, you 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 got the American muscle size body. No, no, because if I was already in the 83 percentile for baby weight when I was born as an American, if we control that for actually being Chinese, I probably was like in the 95. I mean, David, you look like you could be a running back and running some beers too, so I'm just going to be honest. Um, anyway, let's just take a look at the comments section, okay? So, guys, we provided our own personal anecdotes. Andrew is skinny. I am wider than average. I'm lean. I'm lean. You are leaner than average. Okay. You got the M71 B B1 A. Hey, M71. Um, somebody said, so if our parents call us fat, can we just tell them that it's their genetics and their fault? Because basically this guy was like, man, my siblings always tell my parents that they gave us crap genes. Basically, these people were saying, man, if your parents are fat, are you just going to be fat? Mm, uh, for that many first, yeah, it depends, man. It's tough. Listen, if you're, you, it is genetic. You can be predisposed to uh, fat and obesity, I believe. I, I right, if both your this. parents are obese, I yeah, believe. Yeah, and, and obviously, if that's just in the household growing up culturally in the household, it's going to uh, seep into you, you know? This guy said, first, I'm a C-level student. I don't have the gene to prevent smelly armpits. And now this, plus I'm husky. Am I even Asian anymore? And someone else was like, ah, oh, and you suck at math too? And I was like, damn. Um, and I was going to say this, man. Do you think it is hard for people who like, don't live up to the Asian, you know what I mean? There's so many of these like articles, oh, Asians over index on this thing. And then it's like, if you're an Asian that doesn't do those things, do you feel like you don't fit the archetypes? Hey man, you could just look at it this way. You're just non-stereotypical. So just lean into that, but just be the best non-stereotypical Asian you could be. Right. I mean, I'll just say this, man. If, if being like that makes you happy, 
you know, that's what it is. But look at his avatar. He has this, like, sad, fat kitten with the belly sticking out. Like, you could tell he's probably identifying with that when he looks in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do something about it, by the way. Um, People, uh, the next comment was talking about PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. And then with that, oftentimes women uh, develop lipedema, which is abdominal obesity in inflammation. So basically there are medical conditions. I had to look it up where like people don't eat that much high, uh, high caloric intake or sugar, but their body just holds on to everything. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just tell people this, like, Anytime it's really unfortunate, but different people are born with different medical conditions. There's like a low methodology to attack it, a medium methodology, and a high level methodology that may be more extreme or uh, risky, right? Right. And um, for I know, for example, for me, for my dry eyes, I used to waste so much money on like over the counter eye drops. But recently I started like uh, trying to stimulate, you know, my uh, oil glands and my eyes to produce more oil and there's like lipid flow and stuff like that. So I guess what I would tell people is anybody that's in a genetic type of situation like that is go do your due diligence and talk to multiple doctors, mm. you know? Um, this person said, yeah, gene for preventing obesity, huh? That gene is called self-control. Oh. So, so there was a bunch of people that were very skeptical that even this MCB1A1 does much, even if it does do something. I mean, it doesn't stop everything. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, I think the, all these things can be overrided by your diet and lifestyle. It doesn't matter if you, even if you have the gene for not being smelly, you know what I mean? Like having no body odor. I'm sure you could still smell depending on what you eat and if you just sit there all day, you know what I mean? Like right, you're, you're saying that these things are multifactorial and obviously out outside of the genetics. Yeah. This guy said, if humans are eating foods that are ultimately incompatible with human health, that's the first place to start. Right. Wow, what a way to put it. Um, Asians eat the most veggies and herbs in the world. Every meal has some kind of it. So this was a Vietnamese guy saying, yeah, you know, maybe it's just like the diet of veggies. Yeah, it no, is true in a dude, bowl of pho. There's a lot of veggies. Dude, I, I'm not going to lie, man. When I think of like fat Vietnamese or Thai people, I'm like, you guys clearly didn't stick to the Thai or Viet diet. <laughs> there's especially a lot of vegan, greens. Especially Viet. Yeah, there's a lot of greens and meat in there. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the carb stuff. So maybe it's overeating too. Listen, it's possible. Somebody said uh, America needs M7B. One A one potato chips and hot dogs, and then put that, those will put themselves in the genetics of all Americans. That's hilarious. L the idea of lacing hot dogs with this gene, which you can't. I don't think you can just transfer it like that. <laughs> Yo, it may be in the future. Well, David, I wanted to tell you this. This is not a plug for it, but there's an Olympic pill uh, that's gonna be pretty much serve as that. Right. Um, this last person, this girl is from Afghanistan, and she said, damn, East Asians are born with cheat codes. And then somebody else said, yeah, yeah, they might have cheat codes when it comes to this stuff, but many cannot consume lactose or alcohol. Yeah. And we have monolid eyes, and then also people make fun of our, you know, other stuff. So anyways, uh, I, you know, it's all, it's all trade-offs. Um, ultimately, I'll say this. Obviously... To give credit to the study, I do think genetics do play a role. For example, you would be very hard pressed to find any sort of gold medalist Olympic powerlifters that do not have some sort of inborn genetic advantage. Oh yeah. It would be extremely hard to find that because if you have bad genetics for powerlifting, you could try at a 10 out of 10 level your whole life and you're not gonna get to an Olympic level. Yeah. But here's the thing, we're not really talking about doing anything at a high level, we're just talking about preventing things at a low level. Mm -hmm. So I guess, what do you think, Andrew? Does this haplogroup advantage, let's just say the study's real, give you like, what, a 3% advantage against obesity, 5%, 10%? And then like you said, if all the lifestyle factors and you're just eating chips and all this whatever stuff every day, that's just gonna override that 5% Dude, immunity. Listen, man, like I said, I think there's plenty of, Asians are getting a little bigger now. That's fair. Uh, there's also a lot of skinny fat Asians and I'll and, tell you this, Asians man, in Asia are actually getting fatter too. Yeah. Asians in Asia are leaning into it because the snacks are so good. They're not just eating hot foods anymore. Everybody's eating the snacks and the, I, I give it to you. The snacks are delicious. Boba, delicious. All this fried chips, all those little turtle chips from Korea, delicious. Uh, they, they got matcha versions of everything. Nowadays. Oh my God. The Japanese candy, the Chinese crackers, everything is delicious. So 
you fall into the deliciousness lifestyle, this delicious lifestyle, this yummy. Are you talking about the yummy life? Yeah, that if you just want to consume and live in this yummy life, let me tell you, you will probably be on your path to being overweight or developing mm. uh, pre diabetes, okay? But if you do it in moderation, that is probably the best way, okay? So you are saying that if somebody lives their life based around what is yummy, then their body will be gummy. And yes, you will start to become flabby, then become a fatty. And have a big tummy. Um, I'll say this. What if somebody had a gene, Andrew, where insulin spiking foods that are mostly delicious to the human you know, taste palate and psychology tasted bad? What if all the foods that get people fat in 2024 actually just tasted gross to somebody? Right. Wouldn't that be a genetic advantage? Whoa, whoa. Like your body was allergic to anything that was processed and not natural. I, I think in the future, some people are allergic to processed foods, but also I think, yeah, some people, is anybody allergic to sugar? Let's see how, let's check up on their health. Anyways, guys, you let us know in the comments down below what you think about this. Asians uh, some a good amount of Asians, especially Southern Han Chinese, may have a gene that protects them from obesity, sort of. So it makes sense anecdotally because we know a lot of Asians who are lean and skinny down there, you know, in that area of the world. So no, it's true. When I go to Nike down there, I gotta get like triple XL on the t shirt. Yeah, but but does it not apply to like Japan and Korea and like? The Philippines, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was saying because everybody's thin when you go to Asia. Yeah, well, maybe it's just who they tested. Anyways, guys, that was their testing group. I I'll say this. As somebody who was born, like I said, 8.8 .8 pounds when I came out of the womb, it's true that, like, if you're born with a certain genetic de uh, predisposition to, like, do something, you're going to have to work harder than somebody who doesn't have that to fight it off. Mm -hmm. And that's just, like, life in general, guys. So, uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below of this study. Uh, let us know what your experience is. Do you believe in it? Not. Is it just lifestyle factors? And until next time, we're going to hop off, boys. We out. Peace. Peace.